G'day, g'day. I'm just uh, waiting at the front of a, a job that we're quoting up uh, this afternoon. The video that I got going today um, was of trimming on like tiled path areas in the in the grass itself or in the garden. And um, when you got to do that with the trimmer rather than an edger, uh, a little tip: just keep your line as short as you can. Obviously, not too short, but shorter than you normally would because when you're doing it, you want to be just finishing it right in line with where the end of the tile or paver ends. And so when you're doing that, you've got to make it so that when you're coming through on the angle, you're not going too far across. And um, I just think that that's the best way around it. Uh, and I'm just in the middle of the uh, street here, so everyone's looking, thinking, what, what's he doing talking to himself? And um, anyway, when you're doing it on the side, yeah, you don't want it too long because you're going to be eating into the grass too much. So with that uh, being said, you'll notice on the video that I uh, show, if you have a keen eye, you'll see there's a couple of areas I've just gone that little bit too far. Not a major deal when it's in a growth area like it is, but if it's in a shaded spot and it's not going to grow, like come back as hard, you've got to be real uh, precise with your, your cutting in there. Next video was of the uh, weed and feed, and I want to touch on the weed and feed bottles. Uh, the variety in which you use, make sure you get the correct type, Buffalo Pro for Buffalo Lawns, just as a general rule. Everything else, Cooch, Kokuyu, just get the general one, it's a little bit cheaper um, and comes in a bit bigger bottle as well. So it works out a bit more better value if you don't have the Buffalo, but if you do, unfortunately you need to get that right stuff and um, you can't go wrong. So you'll notice with the pattern, I like to go one way, up and down, as if you're mowing the lawn and then across the lawn, up and down, just the exact same way um, you would when you're mowing, just the same pattern, crisscross. And then that way you're covering the whole area um, and that it's a foliage applicator. So with that, you wanna be getting every little bit of that leaf, even underneath the leaf if possible. Um, in certain areas, you'll notice I slow down, really concentrate on those areas and just hold that weed and feed bottle um, straight on that uh, problem area, whether it's clover, whether it's bindi, um, broadleaf, whatever it might be, um, dandelions, it, it just depends. Wherever you're in your situation, just concentrate on those areas. Blanket the whole lawn, of course, but really concentrate on the areas that it's most needed. Now, a little um, tip too, it does harm lawns if you um, cut too short, but if you just cut generally at a good height, um, you're just taking the top off the blades. That's what I like to do. It helps penetrate the plant. Uh, in my opinion, the bottle uh, would tell you differently. It says to wait seven days. Some of them are four days after mowing. Some are two days, like just depends on the brand. But I like to hit it straight away uh, on my own lawns anyway. And I've done it on my clients' lawns for the last couple of years. And every single time it works a lot quicker, gets into the plant a lot quicker. And that's what you want. At the end of the day, you want a, a quick uh, gratification for your clients and you, you want to be showing results as quick as possible. Certain grass types, certain conditions, times of year, uh, obviously middle of winter, it's gonna be slower acting because things aren't growing as quickly. Uh, springtime, autumn, summer, it'll just penetrate real quick. So with that, I uh, forget what else I wanted to mention about the, the weed and feed bottles for you. It'll come to me. But yeah, I'm just waiting to hear back for, uh, it's a commercial job this one. So I'm waiting to hear back from the bloke, we'll meet up, uh, quote it all up. Price wise, uh, going into this, if it was two years ago, I really would have went in um, like best price possible, what can I do to get this work type thing. And now knowing what I can get uh, with a variety of works, the price is the price. If they come to the party, they, they come to the party. If not, um, there's plenty of people here that'll be vying for this job. So um, what I weigh up to, just a little mention of this, you're in public areas, public spaces. Typically, a lot of these type jobs, some of them are 24 seven. They're gonna have, um, maybe not in, in this climate with COVID at the moment, but in the future, it will be back to that. And so you're gonna have cars in the car park, you're gonna have pedestrians walking, you're gonna have people around. R rather than a typical residential or an acreage where you've got pretty much the area to yourself, you've got a lot of other considerations here to take into account. A lot of other, like there's a higher chance you're gonna break a window because there's a lot more cars. Like there's so many little things that you gotta weigh up when you're doing this and don't just think it's, oh, 
I want to get my name out there, so I've got to do it cheap, and um, and I've got to come in real real low to get this job, and then everyone's going to see me because it's the main drag. I, I stopped thinking that way a very long time ago, pretty much instantly when I started the business. It wasn't about that. It's about uh, being able to provide a, a good wage uh, for yourself, a worker, depending if you want more workers than one, and all of that factored in. So when you're doing this and you've got these extra little considerations, that's why the price is the price. It's if you break something, you've got insurance, yeah, but the more times you do something, the higher your premium's gonna be. So all these considerations that you don't normally would, like you wouldn't normally take into consideration when you're first starting out, um, because you just want that work, but really just have a think about it. Make sure you're doing uh, the right thing by everyone. And that way when you're doing it, you wanna turn up to a job and enjoy it. You don't wanna have to uh, fight tooth and nail to get the job, and then when you get it, you're not earning enough um, based on what you know you could earn and therefore you don't enjoy that job as much. So keep that enjoyment factor up as high as possible, therefore keep your prices up as high as possible. It's very simple. Um, I don't understand why people want to lowball all the time but it happens time and time again. Um, the more you see it going on, the more you just got to stick firm to your pricing and know what you're worth because your clients will stick around. They'll, they'll stay, they'll keep coming back. So. That's a big thing. Um, the weed and feed, other little mention, hasn't really come back to me as yet. Besides, you can get it cheaper. If you buy the bottle, it comes in little refills, so keep your bottles, refill it up. That way when you're going and charging out for your clients, you can actually make a little bit of profit on it. You can make a little bit of um, money back on the material because instead of that bottle saying, like, like say, what, $25 for the bottle? So you can get a whole little thing that makes up two or three bottles for $20, $20 $25 around that figure. So you're getting three for one, um, things like that. You've really got to start thinking that way if you're going to be profitable because you've got to make money every, everywhere you can um, and still to give a fair price. But it's the time going to get the material. It's the know-how of you can actually mix it up rather than buying a, a standalone bottle that's pre-mixed, ready to go. The thing I like about mixing it yourself, you can make it that little bit stronger as well um, just to really attack them weeds or bindies, whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, it's completely... Uh, I lost it. thought of it as I was doing the thing four hours ago when I was applying it. Thought, yeah, I'll mention that in the video. That's a good little tip. But I might add it to the description if I think of it later. Um, but otherwise, thanks for watching. These videos will be coming up. You've got the paving job, nice edges, and then you've got the weed and feed, and that'll do. I'm gonna see if this guy's messaged me, because uh, five minutes and we should be good to rock and roll. And that'll do me for the day, I think. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you later on next week, probably. It's meant to be raining tomorrow and only 15 degrees. Got acreage works, um, two of. Might only just be one. Um, one of them I can get away with just brush cutting the whole day, so I'll just be doing that in the rain. All fun and uh, games, part and parcel of the business. So you just got to take what you can. As long as you get a little raincoat on or a big little weatherproof jumper in the back here that I would throw on with a hoodie. Just keep working away, keep plugging away. All right, talk to you later. Goodbye.